Hello and welcome to a discussion about segment reporting and performance evaluation. After watching this video, you will be able to define the terms associated with segment reporting, prepare a segment income statement, evaluate a segment using return on investment, and evaluate residual income. Let's first talk about some terminology that is used by companies that prepare segment reports. A centralized organization is one where executive management makes all the decisions. Most companies begin as centralized with the owner making all the decisions, but as the company grows, other executive managers are added. As the growth continues, executive management finds that they do not have the time and knowledge to make all the decisions and the organization evolves into a decentralized organization with functional managers making decisions to accomplish goals established by the executive team. A large organization generally has several segments. A segment is a part of the business where revenues and costs are separately monitored for profitability. The segment manager is responsible for and is rewarded for segment profitability. Segments are sales territories by geographic area, manufacturing plants, product lines, and sometimes service departments. The purpose of a segment report is to provide information on the performance of each part of the company. There are four different types of segments that are monitored for performance. The manager of a revenue center is responsible for sales only and is not responsible for controlling cost. The manager of a cost center is only responsible for controlling cost. A cost center provides services to other areas of the company. The manager of a profit center is responsible for both revenue and cost and achieving the expected profit. This manager is evaluated on meeting the company budget. The manager of an investment center is responsible for revenues, cost, profits, and making good investments in assets that will give an acceptable return. The type of center depends on what the manager is responsible for. The segment report provides information according to manager responsibilities. The format of a segment income statement is similar to a contribution margin or variable cost income statement. The segment report has a column for each segment of the company and a total column. The variable cost associated with the sales for each segment. This gives a segment contribution margin for each segment. Identifiable fixed costs are then subtracted to get a segment profit margin. The cost incurred to support the operations of the total company that are not specific to a segment are stated in the total column only. Let's talk about the definition of some of the costs on a segment income statement. Traceable costs are incurred at a specific segment or division only. Variable costs are always traceable and direct to the segment because they occur when sales occur. Fixed costs are traceable and direct if they will not occur if the segment is discontinued. The segment margin is the primary measure of profitability for the segment. This is the amount that total company profits will be lower if the segment is discontinued. Common or non-traceable costs are reported in the total column only because they are not specific to a segment and are incurred to support all segments and operations of the company. These costs are assumed to occur until the entire company is no longer operating. Discontinuing a specific segment will not eliminate these costs. The most common method for evaluating the profitability of an investment center or a segment is to monitor the return on investment. Return on investment is generated from two parts, profit margin and asset turnover. Profit margin is the percent profit on every $1 in sales the company generates. The higher the better. Asset turnover is the sales generated from every dollar that is invested in the business. The goal is to generate profitable sales from each dollar invested in the company which will give a high return on investment. Profit margin can be increased by increasing sales or reducing expenses. 
Asset turnover will be higher when a lower investment is made to generate the same level of sales. Residual income is a way to measure if the business segment is generating a higher profit than is required or meets the goals of the company. The required operating income is also the ROI in dollars is computed by multiplying the average operating assets by the required rate of return established by the company. This is then compared to the actual operating income from the segment to give the residual income. Residual income is the profit that is higher or lower than required. Management bonuses are often determined based on the amount of residual income the segment generates. Let's walk through an example of how to prepare a segment income statement. Please take a moment to read through the information. Each product is considered a segment. You should be noticing the sales price, variable cost, and traceable or direct cost which will be reported in each segment column. The allocated or non-traceable or corporate cost will only be reported in the total column. The segment income statement has a column for each segment of the company and a total column. Sales and variable costs are related to a segment only and are stated in the segment columns. Total amounts for each segment is the amount per unit multiplied by the units sold. The next step is to state the traceable or direct fixed cost in each segment. The segment contribution margin is the amount that will be added to income from selling products only. Variable and traceable fixed costs will not be incurred if the specific segment is discontinued. Fixed costs do not change as volume changes. Costs that are incurred to support the operations of the total company, which are referred to as common or non-traceable or allocated, are reported only in the total column. The division segment margin is the profit that will be lost by the total company if the product line or segment is no longer operated. Segment managers are evaluated based on the division segment profit amount. Total operating income is computed only for the total company column. Let's now look at an example of using return on investment to evaluate performance. Take a moment to read the information listed that is required for computing return on investment. The accountant must first compute the segment operating income, which will be the same as the segment income on a segment income statement. The average investment in operating assets is also required. Average is beginning plus ending divided by 2. The two parts of return on investment are computed in order to analyze the business. Operating income is 17.65%, which means that 17.65 cents out of every sales dollar becomes profit. The asset turnover is 0.85, which means that 85 cents of sales is generated for each dollar invested in assets. The assets are used to generate the sales that generate the income, and the segment has generated a return on investment of 15%. This segment was required to earn 10% on assets to meet the company's goals. This segment has $2 million invested in assets and 10% would give a return of $200,000. The actual operating income is $300,000, which is $100,000 higher than required return. This is the residual income. After watching this video, you should be able to define the terms associated with segment reporting and prepare a segment income statement. You should also be able to evaluate a segment using return on investment and residual income. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com. The practices you learn will give you examples of each of the concepts discussed in this video. Then work the practice test to verify your understanding. 
Write the answers out and check your answers to the explanations and answers provided. Please go ahead and take the time to write them out. It'll help you get it. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is really appreciated.